Welcome, beloved. This is a hope community. Yeah. We are building hope. We are rooting ourselves. We are getting solid and we are holding on to God. Like literally, indeed, our life really counts. Uh, depends on that. And today, while I thought about you and the so many things that we get to go through in the world, mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah 43, 2 came to me that when you pass through the waters, mm -hmm. I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we feel like we are on fire, like literally on fire. We feel we are burning down. We feel the rivers are sweeping us over. The water is gushing and there's a lot of energy that is coming at us and we are being pressed from all sides, but we will not be consumed. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are here. And to share the story today, we have Pastor Michael Chris. He's going to take us through what he deems to be the roughest part of his life, how he came out of that, the lessons that he learned from that. Mm -hmm. I know that we are going to get a solid foundation on which we stand, and I know that our lives are never going to be shaken again. All right, so come with me through this story. I know that I'm, I'm a student. I'm here to listen. I'm here to learn. So I hope that you can keep that feedback coming. It really encourages us. And then it also gives us points, um, touch points where to highlight and the things to address. So the numbers are on our screen. Make sure that you use them. All right, Pastor. Yes. Good to have you. <laughs> it's a blessing to be here. I've heard so much, mm. so much about you. I've, I've definitely listened to your music. Mm. I've um, watched some of your preachings. Mm. I don't ask where. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mm. I've bumped into them. Mm. And um, when I had just the snippet of what your story, a snippet, I don't think I had the, the whole mm. of it, but a snippet of what mm. your story was. And I was like, uh, he's a pure hope giver. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are here. That's right. To be able to give hope. Amen. And I know so many people would love to know who is Michael Chris. Mm. Uh, where does he come from? What I does he do? Mm. So let's start with that. Get it out of the way and then Blessings. dive into the story. Uh, I am Michael Chris. I do, um, first of all, I'm a son uh, from a family of 10 and I'm the last born in the family. Oh. Yes, so I have siblings who are old enough to be my father. Okay. In that way, <laughs> if I can put it that so way. So you're the naughty one of the family. Uh, the I was, last the, I was the beloved, <laughs> to put it that way. I was the, the kid that never does anything wrong. I know. In mom's, yeah. I know those kinds of <laughs> in kids. In mom's eyes. Uh, hmm. but, um, uh, I'm a father of four. Hmm. I'm a husband of one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am uh, a pastor of a church called Kairos Church London okay. and Kairos Ministry, which is now spreading out in other different parts of the world okay. uh, in the fellowship setting for mm. now. Mm. Uh, I got born again in 1999 after working um, a life of various aspects, mostly mm. in the music mm. uh, fraternity. I started singing from St. Paul's Cathedral Choir in Namirembe mm. under the leadership of Mr. Nkugwa those days. And I remember by the time I think the bishop was known uh, uh, Koyo, there's another bishop, Misaidi Kawuma. Okay. He was the bishop. <laughs> the, the, those that are viewing are like, yeah, we've not exactly, heard of that. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, he saw rest in peace. Mm. Uh, so that's the time I was in the choir. I ventured out into secular music after that and a group called Extra Grim and uh, the leadership or oh, I wouldn't say covering, but the guidance of a guy called Shanks Vividi, Ooh. who was the famous guy at that time. Uh, Extra Grim had people like... Some mm. people already have questions. How old are you? <laughs> there you go. Okay, it's let's... indeed. It's a good age. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was with people like Cha Gambido, who is called Chaga now mm, and stuff. Mm. It was in the same group. And uh, then obviously I branched out and I started the duet with a gentleman called Moses Sully or popularly known as Bebe Cool currently. I was in a duet with him for about two or three years. And then we went into Sabrina's era, Sabrina's pub. I know. Yeah, where I was with the likes of um, Irene Namubiru, Juliana Kukli, Chizo, to mention just a few. And then in 1999, I went to visit my friends at Kansang and Miracle Center. And these friends are Matthew Nabuiso now into movies, another guy called uh, Luther T. Singer, then another lady called Noel Nakatrudish is in the UK. They were 
singing with us in Sabrina's, but they got born again before we did. And so they were going to the UK. So I said, if I don't go visit these guys, mm -hmm. they would think I am a bit jealous that they're going to this. I should go and congratulate them over getting the visit. Those days to get a visa to the UK, so was a yeah, it was mm. impeccably impossible. Mm. So, but when I went, I met this gentleman and spent the night in the bar, in the club. Mm -hmm. I was smelling of alcohol. I had a hangover. And I met this guy at the church. And I asked the guy about my friends, because obviously I was fearless, as mm, you know, you mm. know, uh, people kind of knew me. So when I met this gentleman, he took me to my friends. Uh, lo and behold, I knew there was a pastor there called Pastor Chuewis, but I didn't know how he looked like. But we had overheard over mm, the years. Mm. So anyway, after we speak and my friends are like, oh, you know, things like mm, that. Because mm. <laughs> obviously that smelled the booze. Yeah. And then after a while, I was about to leave. I said, but I want to leave quick because I don't want the pastor to meet me because I thought pastors would be like, oh, you know, stuff like that. Mm. Mm. Lo and behold, they told me the guy who brought you to us is Pastor Chuewis. Okay. That knocked me out of my <laughs> shoes. I was like, what? I was like, no, you're kidding. I said, that's the guy. I said, so pastors don't judge people. That was the first time. Wow. So... I was intrigued. And in fact, no, that is such a joke. I said, ah, let me call him to come. I was like, no, 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 I said, don't worry. The guy, there's nothing he doesn't know, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You drinking is nothing to the guy. And this is why we get born again. The Bible says, come as you were. Mm -hmm. So already, as someone was preached to me, then, then. indirectly without saying a thing, because wow. the guy spoke to me for a while. Obviously, he had, you know, uh, smelt, you know, the booze and stuff, but he didn't charge. So I was very intrigued to know about this Christ eh? mm, mm, that doesn't judge, mm, this Christ who is so gracious. Mm. So he comes to meet me, and the guy came to meet me with a waistcoat, bus coat. That's what I you know. know. I know those <laughs> a buses. brand new bus <laughs> coat. Those days, that was the in thing, Cuck yeah. Franklin days and mm, stuff. Mm. And he gave it to me brand new. And he said, oh, you're welcome to come here anytime you want. In fact, if you had come earlier, I would have gone with you to the UK, but we've already processed the visas. Hey! Mm -hmm. I was like, I need this Yesu. Yeah? Wow. If this Yesu doesn't judge. Eh? So anyway, I kept visiting the church. Then when I saw, uh, you know, the Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. Mm -hmm. So I felt I was in good company. I felt this Christ I could relate with. Mm -hmm. I gave my life to Christ. Slowly by slowly, I went off booze. I started to detest hanging out with some, you know, mm, folk. Mm. And then I gave my life to Christ and I moved forward. So fast forward, I moved to the UK, you know, and um, I went to study, finished studying. I didn't bother to renew my visa in the UK because I thought our life was school because I met people I was in school with. Mm, mm. We we're all hanging around the same place and nobody bothered about visas. But some of them had in mind that we're done with the UK, we're going back to Uganda. Mm. Just, you know, doing chayo for a few months so we can gather a bit we can have, then, go, then back. go back home. But for me, I didn't know whether I was coming back or staying. Lo and behold, get married, have our first child, second, and now, okay, we are staying in the UK. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't, you know, legalized my status in the UK. Uh, lo and behold, now trouble starts coming after that. Uh, you know, uh, they start hunting us down because we didn't have papers. Mm. Um, we were illegal in the country. And then that is when I started seeking this law that I knew. Because mm -hmm. we get detained uh, to be deported to the UK uh, about seven times. That's what I can remember, but mm. there were more probably. Uh, and... Remember, we have two children, two boys. You know, they started detaining us when we had two boys only. Then my wife got pregnant again because they detain you. You fight a bit. They bring you up, but there's nothing mm. concrete. They mm. wait for you to present your case, see how best you can. If you win the case, mm. if you fail, the process goes back on and on and on again. But two interesting times, mm. uh, the second, last, and the last, is when we saw the power of God work. Uh, the second last time, uh, we were put into detention center, and then we were 
driven close to the plane. And miraculously, uh, we had an injunction put in and we were taken off. Then the second time, we were taken into the plane. And this second time, I was so powerless. I was exhausted both physically and spiritually. Uh, but that second time was so unique because my spiritual father was in, 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 in the UK because he has these yearly programs he does. Mm. I'd met him on a Friday night. I'd met him on a Thursday night and he had asked me to minister with him Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, mm. you know. Then Friday morning, around 3 a.m., they come to arrest us. Where this, this time it was the first process because obviously they had failed to deport us all the six times. Mm. So this one they had, you know, they, they wanted to arrest us on a weekend where judges don't work on weekends. So there was no Nothing injunction or anything, done. you know. Mm. There was no legal system that would help us because obviously in that part of the world they respect the legal system. So long and short of it, we're taken into, we're taken into detention on a Friday. Uh, they processed to remove us on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. The plane was full on a Saturday. So Sunday was the day. While I was there, they give you an opportunity to make one phone call or two to your lawyer. And, you know, but for me, the first phone call I made was to my spiritual father. Mm -hmm. and I told him, you know what? This is the situation at hand. I believe in the principles of God. I believe in spiritual hierarchy. God is not a respecter of persons, mm. but God honors his oil upon a person, mm. you know. Mm. And I said, you know what? This is a situation at, at hand. Speak a word. Mm. Speak. That's all I need. I don't need to be pitied. I need a solid word. And the, the man of God prayed and said, the God I serve, the God my father serves, the God my father's father served, mm -hmm. may he intervene. Wow. God of Abraham, Isaac, may he intervene. Mm. And that was it. And the guy said, you know what? Mukamali now. That was it. Sunday, <laughs> things get worse. Mm -hmm. We are taken to the, to, to the airport. Uh, not only are we taken, we thought maybe this time they will take us just like last time. We were going to stop in front of the plane. But lo and behold, they took us to the plane. We entered, my wife was put at the very back of the plane. My sons were, of course, excited this time around. They are on the plane going to They've fly, but been, we... Um, you know exactly. The me, I was already in tatters. I was already days, you know, in pieces. Right there. Mm. I, I, I want us to be able to mm. go through your mind because mm. when you're in that heat of the moment, a mm. lot is running through your exactly. mind. Exactly. You, mm. Uncontrollably. Mm. What exactly was happening? So I was putting pieces together because obviously, um, A, I didn't set up anything. B, I have children that are brought into this world. C, they were not born in Uganda. They don't know a thing. It's one thing to visit Uganda when you desire to. It's another thing to be forced be into. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So I'm um, a father, myself. I was young as well. I'm thinking, okay, I've studied, I have a degree, but so what? Where am I going to get the job? How yeah. am I going to put, you know, Food my wife food. is pregnant seven months. You know, everything was all over. But while I'm on the plane right there, because I'd we had called the lawyer. The lawyer was like, there's nothing I can do anymore. Mm. We've tried to push the injunction in. There's no lawyer in the court today, mm. Sunday. Mm. There is nothing we can do. So long and short of it, I sit there. You know that sweat, the cold sweat. It's mm. called the, not the warm sweat, mm. but that cold sweat you feel. You are, it's cold all over my body. And while I sat, I was, you know, having conversation with these guys because they now know us because that, come to us like several times. We have 17 people who are allocated to a family of five per se, you know, or four. So this guy tells me, even though we fly you to Entebbe and this phone call comes through, we will bring you back. You know, you sit back. If this phone rings, that's your lucky day. We'll bring you back and say, we've done it for about two, three people in about 450 flights we've had to take. 450 <laughs> So I'm thinking, uh, uh, where is the hope? So I'm like, Lord, in your hands I am. So I sit there. 
my kids are all over the place. We were sat, some of them chattered, I think, the whole back of the plane, this big thing. And it was British Airways. We sit. While I was seated there, I heard vividly the voice of the Lord tell me, be still and know that I am God. When I heard that, there is a peace that overwhelmed me. Like, in my mind, I was like, Lord, I know where I'm going. I am sorted. Mm. Whatever happens, I'm in your hands. Mm -hmm. It is good. That, those kind of moments, wow. you know, when the peace of the Lord comes upon you, the Bible says, and the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding mm. shall guard your hearts. My heart was so consoled. I had this confidence in me that I didn't have the whole process. Mm. And while I was sat there, I started having happy thoughts. I started having this overwhelming joy. And I just told my children, do whatever you want, you know, because before I was holding them, sit down. You know that kind of confusion, yeah, like sit. Yeah. Don't you see what we're facing right now? It's like, you know, do whatever you want. Then, while we're there, the phone call comes in to that small phone. Now the plane has started to move out, reversing, and the phone call comes through. And the guy looked at the phone. He just pressed it. He killed the phone, the, the call. Mm. Hey. But the guy and had already told me. I mm. saw it. The guy had told me that if this phone, this phone does not ring for anything else but mm. to tell us mm. to bring you back. That's it. Tiny little phone. Anyway, mm. the guy kills the call. And now the plane now moves out. It is moving forward to the runway. I think we were number three in queue. You know, so uh, then while we're about to go to the runway, the phone rings again. And the guy had to pick the call. While he picks the call, I hear, because this thing was loud, and the woman on there told the guy, the family that you're deporting today, take them off the plane now. They are illegally being deported. We received, we were supposed to receive, uh, it was fax days, it used to be fax. Mm, mm. You know, this fax was sent on Friday, but nobody brought it to us on time. And if you take it, we'll be sued, and we'll have to pay these guys. The verdict had been granted to stay. I had it with my ears. <laughs> you, now, you, you know, moving from mm -hmm. an alien zone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to, <laughs> it's two, there are two worlds. Yeah. Immediately, I was shifted In into the world. Do you know what I mean? The world of, I have rights. I have a voice. <laughs> you know? And the guy looked at me. And the guys, because I was talking to them about God before, mm. you know, I'm a minister. The 17 uh, guys. Yeah. And the guy said that God you worship is a living God. That was his statement. Wow. So uh, the control tower rings, the, plane, the, the pilot, and the pilot now announces we have to go back. The people we must take off, take it wherever. And the plane had to go back to dock. And we had taken off. How did it feel? My Walking God. down. <laughs> From that day, I vowed. And say, Lord, I will never, ever, even doubt. Listen, we have faced so many impossible mountains mm. from that time mm. to today. Mm. But just as somebody says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, mm. and Jacob, mm. we refrain and say, the God who made us leap over mm. this mountain, mm. that mountain. Mm. He great. is the same God who's going to do it again and, and again. again and again. I have testified wow. in so many meetings, wow. both here and away. And uh, that God, he is the God that has always come through for us. Wow. You read the scripture that when you go through the fire, mm. I'll be with you. Mm. You see, it's one thing to relate with a God of David, with a God of Joseph, mm. you know, with a God of Jeremiah, with a God of Elijah. You never saw you know, him. You never, yeah, you never. just read You get it. Like Even God. the God of a pastor, mm, you know. Mm. But it's another thing to say, the Lord my God. My God. You know? Mm. So, it's not like we didn't have where to go. It's not like we were on death row. But, he is the God that took us off that plane. He is the God that granted us citizenship. You have, and you have to Listen, mm. because I was kind of known... They printed us in some newspapers here, I won't say for purposes of being professional, mm -hmm. the tabloids that were loud during that time. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, some had already alleged that we were deported and we in the country already. So there was such shame that was written all over our backs and yeah. faces. Yeah. But the mighty hand of God erased the shame wow. from us wow. and granted us a new life. Mm. The Bible says in Revelation, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and yeah. the word of their testimony. Mm. But mm. the last line shapes everything. And they love their lives not, even unto death. Wow. When God brings you over a mountain, your life is nothing. You have to look at the greatness of God. Mm. And God allows us to walk through turbulences and troubles so that we can see that he's bigger yeah. than anything. Yeah. He's greater mm. than any storm. Mm. You know, the disciples there in the boat, they were with the master of the storms, mm. but they had magnified the storm. You know, yeah. they wake him up and they tell the guy, don't you mind that we're perishing? Can you imagine? Mm. But he was also in the boat. So if it was to perish, he no, was also true. perishing. Yeah. But little did they know that the master, and many a time we forget mm. that God is bigger. The Bible says the earth and the fullness thereof yeah, is God's. Yeah. You know, so it is that hope. But before we continue, and I know obviously we, we shall continue mm -hmm. to, there's a scripture that really caught my eye. Mm attention uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 6. Mm. And of course, Paul is speaking about so many things to the Hebrews, but he says, this hope we have mm. as an anchor of the soul. As this hope anchor. we have as, as an anchor. anchor of the soul. When the soul is depleted, when the soul is in pieces, you have nothing to hold mm. it to. Mm. But this hope an is an anchor mm. that we can hold on it, both sure and steadfast. Mm. It is not a hopeless anchor. Yes. It is not Lugambo. Mm. Mm. It is not a Mbu thing. Do you know? This is sure and steadfast. Mm? Mm. And which enters the presence behind the veil. That this thing has gone beyond the preachers. Yeah. This thing has gone beyond the writings. Mm. This thing has gone beyond the narratives. This thing goes beyond history. It goes beyond the future. Mm. You can hold it's it. It's that powerful. Do you know? This hope we have in Christ. So, hope. Mm. God gives us hope. But you must tarry and be mm. in the knowledge of God. So Paul says, and let this man that was in Christ be in you, mm. which is this mind of Christ. You know, Christ, when he was here, he faced troubles like we did. At one point, he was afraid mm. of what was coming. I don't want to use the word afraid because Christ is Christ. But he had seen what was coming. And in the human good. existence, this mm. is so much to handle. It was heavy. But that mind that was in him, mm. that laid down the fear and said, let your will be done. Mm. That is the mind we should have. Because the truth is, only God has the ability to kill the flesh mm. and the soul. Wow. So if your soul can anchor on this on hope, the hope, then the rest is nothing. Wow. <laughs> we are pressed, but we are not consumed. Exactly. And we are not going up in flames. Exactly. When, if we are to go back mm. uh, just a little bit, because so many people are going through some things. We talked to so many people that were, wanted to go to a point of committing suicide. Mm. Go to, that means there's some, the mind that mm -hmm. you talked about, the mm. mind of Christ was mm. not in them. Exactly. That means they're, they're consumed by their own minds. Mm -hmm. How will people see mm -hmm. this is the end of it all? What am I going to tell mm -hmm. the people? So you have so many things that are going, but I want to go back to the detention mm -hmm. centers mm -hmm. because here you are taken from your comfort, mm -hmm. from your home. Mm -hmm. You are used to waking up, have mm -hmm. breakfast, mm -hmm. take your kids to school, mm -hmm. do whatever it is. That mm -hmm. You have your normal routine. Mm -hmm. You are a pastor. You have mm -hmm. a church. Mm -hmm. You have people that look up mm -hmm. to you. But you also have a future that you're right. forging mm -hmm. for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you have a wife mm -hmm. that is um, in a romantic way, in mm -hmm. a relational way, mm -hmm. connected to you and mm -hmm. looking at you as a leader mm -hmm. of the family. Mm -hmm. So I want us to, because so many things break apart mm -hmm. in, in the process. That's right. Going to the detention centers, mm. what questions did you have? What questions did your wife have? What mind did you have? God is amazing. Mm. So the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing mm. and hearing by the word of God. Mm. You see, there are revelations and levels of revelation of God. 
When you need a billion shillings, you can think that's a, an impossible. It's until you get to the billion shilling mountain and you're standing on top of it. Yeah. Then God reveals himself in a different way. Mm. Elijah mm. slains the prophets of Baal. He is on top. Fire comes down, consumes everything. I mean, we are not talking about Hollywood. This is mm. reality. Yeah. The guy leaves that place. In that anointing and power, he had seen the display of this God. And then this woman, Jezebel, sends a memo. And I want a... your head on a platter. Can you imagine? And he's in the you have again. just finished World War I. I know. You on top, you're a superpower. Mm. A memo comes. If your head is not on a platter by tomorrow morning, let me be, <laughs> let me die. The guy had to see a different revelation of God that goes beyond the fire coming from him. And there's that revelation. And the guy goes to the mountain and God wakes him up. Mm. The ravens feed the guy. He's woken up to walk again. Ravens. Mm. You know, do you know ravens? I don't know what they're called. Or ensege. When mm. they were mm. ensege, right? Mm. Ravens are selfish birds. Extremely selfish. They eat the meat. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They are selfish and particular. But to be fed by a selfish bird, mm. by the time the bird says, ah, ah, I will not eat. This one I'm not Let eating. Let me take it to. Can you imagine? Mm. Do you see the humor of God? I know. So that was to show Elijah that there's another realm in God mm. that you have never seen. Mm. Then Elijah comes out. He thinks God is going to come with thunder because he had seen the fire God. Everything happens. And then God speaks to him in a still voice. Mm. By the time Elijah leaves that place, he knows a different God. Mm. You cannot shake him. Yeah. So we get into detention. We see these walls were not very big, but in our imagination, just like the children of Israel went to the land mm. to see, mm. and they say, we were the grasshoppers. Some saw they, they were the grasshoppers. Do you know what I mean? Mm. We're the, they were the giants. We are grasshoppers. But there were some who had seen differently. So we get into this place and mm. we see the same doors we've been seeing every day. Mm. But now they are taller. Yeah. <laughs> they are bigger. Because you're in there. You know what I mean? But little by little, faith cometh by hearing. We had nobody else but God. Wow. We get into the word. We start reading. I will never forget, for the first time I landed upon Rhapsody of Realities, mm -hmm. that magazine they oh, print. Yes. Oh, yes. Where did you get it from? In the detention center. Okay. Because they're given out in the, I think it's called the religious room. Mm hmm the chapel, mm. I started reading and faith started bouncing from the pages of that book wow, to my heart. I started becoming another man. I started speaking faith. I said from now on, I'm not speaking my words. Mm. I spoke. My wife is a very detailed strong person in faith. For her, she wasn't talking. Mm. She has this principle, I will not allow my mouth to talk me out of my destiny. Wow. So she was quiet the whole time. That is huge. You know? That quiet. That is huge. And me, I said, Lord, I'm changing my confession. I will not allow my, <laughs> my mouth, mouth to talk me out. Out of my destiny. Like my mouth can wander, <laughs> can meander sometimes. Do you know what I mean? I know. Yeah. So I said, Lord, me, I'm the talker. I'm speaking your word. The word. Mm. Wow. And I started speaking. Let the so you have say. two warriors. You see what I mean? Let the weak say I'm strong. What a household. Mm? I am the head and all the tail. Wow. Me and my children are for signs and wonders. Wow. We are more than conquerors through him. You know, I started speaking just words. I met people, and of course people knew I was a minister. Lo and behold, before they called me to preach in the chapel, mm -hmm. and faith grew. The walls started shrinking. The doors we had seen as big, they were now smaller. Faith. You were not talking yourselves. Do you know what I meant? Faith. That is huge. I became faith. Strong. Became an anchor. You know, and mm. somewhere along the way, when God is pleased with them, the Bible says when the Lord is pleased with a man, even his enemies live at peace with him. Mm. People who were seeing us as deportees now started talking to us as though we had papers, of which we didn't. Mm. Because it's that favor that comes upon you when you operate Like you're not shaken. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, you walk were, with your head You high. were different. Mm. You know, Abraham was different. Isaac was different. You're in the fire, but you see the fourth you person get it. in the fire. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Israel, Jacob, when it turns, the man was different. How did Jacob get 
the idea that if these animals feed by looking into this thing, they'll bring forth mm. speckled animals. Nobody had done it That's before. A revelation. That has got to be faith that comes from within a man's spirit. That's the reason why the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Mm. We are in the world, but we are not of this world. The body is in the world, but there is a man in there mm. who does not belong here. They speak a different language. And when that man starts speaking that language, heaven comes. Whatever we've been doing else, angels realign. You don't stand still. We are coming. Mm. So the angel tells Daniel, from the first day you prayed, heaven sent. Mm. And I had troubles up there. But because you kept speaking the language of wow. heaven, wow. heaven would not do anything else wow. but send reinforcement. And I'm here. The angel even put it this way. I don't know how I'm going to go back, but there is your answer. Wow. You know? So when we start relating to the true mm. self we are, because we are the image and likeness of God, mm. nothing else. Mm. So when we start to speak the language of our Father, we bring heaven on earth. And once heaven comes down, no depression can stand the presence of God. Mm, mm. How do we know? Mm. Saul had an evil spirit that was sent by God. The Bible says he did not come from hell. And God sent an evil spirit. God sent. Only God could take it. But the Bible says when David invited the presence of God, no evil spirit can stand. No evil spirit has the power to operate in the presence of God. Mm. The Bible says, and the spirit left the man. And it could only return when the man with the presence has gone. Mm. <laughs> Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. Yes, yeah, mm. so when we speak the language of heaven, when we align our thoughts to the thoughts of God, we become the very tabernacle of mm. God. That's why Paul says, know ye not that the spirit of God resides in you. Mm. You know? So we become the very ark of God, the very presence. That's why you go into a place and people are disturbed because you carry a different thing. You were telling us about the story of that mm, gentleman. Mm, mm. He didn't know who he was messing with. Mm. When you carry the presence of God, it's only a matter of time. You know? Yeah. The reason why my wife never says a word, because she knows the power of the word. When you release a word, I would rather man of God slaps me mm, physically mm. than release a word. Because when it's that's released, do you know what I mean? Mm. I would rather you punch me it can to unconsciousness mm. than releasing a word. And that's the thing. So uh, people will say, oh, why are you so mindful about this spiritual father thing? And mm. say, great. you don't choose your family. Mm. I didn't choose. Me, when I was born, this is a different story. Mm. I was born, my mom had waited for a son for my father. Mm -hmm. I get, born, I get born in the family. Three months down the road, my grandmother mm. had, you know, done rituals for his son, for, for her to get the son, my dad. Mm -hmm. And the ritual direction was that my father will never have a boy. So when I was born, my grandmother, my, we were seated, you know how it is, Murujawan, mm -hmm. right? And... In the evening, they'd sat my grandmother, my mother, my auntie. They had come to visit my mom. Mm -hmm. So my mom leaves me in the hands of my grandmother because it was getting cold to go and get baby show, whatever that mm -hmm. thing is, to mm -hmm. cover me. Mm -hmm. She comes back when they had left me on the mat. Mm -hmm. The moose had gone and they had shaved my head. Mm -hmm. They left. I think like a month and a half after that, my dad kicks my mom out, tells my mom, that's not my son. He rejected me at three months. Three months. And I had a spell over my life, in quotes. My grandmother said, if that boy ever turns seven years to my grave there and then. So I used to get this thing, I think it's called celebrity malaria. Every weekend, I would get those fits. Every weekend. And then, my mother, she was a believer, strong believer. She took me, because she was Catholic, but she believed in her. In being born again. Mm, mm. And the new word. So she took me to a priest who prayed for me while I was about to turn seven. And guess what? When the man prayed for me, I never got those fits again. I turned seven and he died. Wow. My grandmother comes to visit mm -hmm. when I'm seven mm -hmm. to see really whether I'm still alive. And I was. I first see my father for the first time in life when I was 16 years. 
or seven ten. We had gone for Lumbe. You know Lumbe mm, in Uganda. Mm, mm. So in the morning they do this thing Kufurumia Lumbe. Yes. So every child has got to go to their family, mm -hmm. to their father. Me, my siblings left. I was left in the had a tent. On your own. Yeah, because obviously my dad had said I'm not. His son. Yeah, so they went and my mom, I asked my mom, why am I being left here? I said, don't worry, ah, let them go. Because mm, she covered mm, me. Yes. She would not expose me well, to this. Nobody ever woman. told me mm -hmm. in my family that, that I was rejected. rejected. Nobody. You know, but I would, because I would ask. I went to school. I was at Mango Primary School here. Miss Mukandoli those days. And we started with a you know, daughter of Tine Funza, mm. uh, Kenneth Mugume, the son of, uh, you know, all the, prim all the minister's kids went to that school. Fathers used to come, but me, it was always mother. So I asked my mom, hey, where's my dad? And the woman had a way of putting this thing off. So anyway, when I turned 17, mm -hmm. the, the, I think I was 15 for that long, but when mm -hmm. I turned 17, mm -hmm. my father requested to see me. Okay. So I went to see him. And then while I was there, I met my auntie, who was very friendly with my mother. And my aunt tells me the whole story. At 17. <laughs> you know how it is. So that is when the guy accepts me. Traditionally, African tradition, when you have children. So what does he tell you? Anyway, he, he didn't say anything. He was, uh, me, I understood. Being mm. a man, there's this man called, you mm. don't want to embarrass the guy. Or what she, mm. Nevertheless, I miss or lacked nothing because yeah. mom covered. Wow. She was so loving, wow. you know, she was there, she was... So anyway, um, like I said, when it comes to naming children, you have to ask your dad. Mm. Mm. I asked the guy, and the guy said, call me in three days. I was in the UK, of course. Called three days after, then the guy told me after like a week and said, you know what? I don't feel it right mm -hmm. in my heart to mm -hmm. choose names for your children. Mm -hmm. Because I was, A, I was never there for you. B, I made a terrible mistake of you know, Rejecting disowning you, you, you know, mm. and see, I don't want this cast to go to my grandchildren. That's what he said. That's what he said. Choose names for, for your, your children. children. I know you're a godly man. You are, you know, worship of the Holy God. Mm. Choose names for your kid. And so I did, wow. you know, and I decided, you know, people wonder why I have Chris for his surname, because the names I had, my grandmother, mm -hmm. they had chosen these names. And these the names, one that... Uh, Shaved my head. Oh my and if I mention this name, you will know why. These names carried meaning. When we found out the spiritual implications of these names, they had to be erased from me for me to stand as the man I am. Wow. Mm -hmm. And indeed, you were created a fighter. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, fast forward to come to mm -hmm. this when a person mm -hmm. is going through all these kind of things, mm -hmm. comes away because God takes you through situations. Mm -hmm. To make you. To a reason. Yes. To make you. Yes. Joseph, he wouldn't have handled to be a prime minister mm. if he had just walked from this end of Israel into Egypt. Swiftly Do you know years. what I mean? Mm. Yeah, but God had to toughen the man mm. to make him be yeah. the Being prime the minister, muscle. to make him wise. Mm. That guy managed Potiphar's wife to excellence. He goes into prison. He was elevated, promoted. Mm. You know, he knew how to take care of a great house. He knew how to take care of prisoners, you know? Yes. That's God. Mm. Mm -hmm. So he trains us. So, you know, that's why Paul says, I count it joy, you know, when I'm going through tribulations. Mm. And, you know, mm. because through that, I become. Is, that's why he said, when I'm weak, mm. then I am strong. Mm. Why? Mm. Because the power of God works in me. Mm. When I'm weak, I give up. When you're strong, you're like, ah, I can do it. Yeah. yeah let me keep going. Mm. <laughs> you never know how powerful God is mm. when you, until you surrender. Mm. When you surrender, so it's better to walk a surrendered life, mm. typically surrendered, because mm. God will function through you the whole time. Wow. Mm. And uh, I want you to speak to, um, mm. definitely, before you went into the detention center, mm. speak the word, mm. and um, your wife does not say anything. That mm. means you had a rooted routine with God and a relationship with That's God. It. So many of us wait until we are in the deep or the depth of the storm, mm -hmm. and that is when we choose to call. Eh? Yeah. Go bitter, eh? Like, yeah, let me, let like, me hold some grass. Me. Yeah, exactly. Save yeah. me. Mm. But you have not created the personal relationship mm -hmm. with God. 
God. Mm. There is nothing in your heart that resonates with mm-hmm. God. There is nothing to flip out or to even bring out mm-hmm. from inside mm-hmm. of you. I want you to, to be able to speak into the lives of mm-hmm. such people, mm-hmm. to be able to know that in the greatest, in the greatness of your life, the happiest moments of your life, mm-hmm. that's when you should be anchored the more. Mm-hmm. Now, I think for me, I'm a preacher of the word, mm. but listen, let us not be deceived. God is the word. There will be no better preacher in the world than God mm. himself. Mm. When we transit out of this life, what are we going to preach in heaven? But the best, the best position any one of us would ever be is a worshiper. When you're a worshiper of the living God, you cease being in the outer court and you get into the Holy of Holies. Mm. And in the Holy of Holies, you hear whispers that other people will never hear. And the more you immerse yourself into the presence of God, the more you get big and greater revelations. Mm. So for us, my wife, my wife is a worshiper and so am I. My children are worshippers. So we had cultivated that routine. Me, I learned from my spiritual father. Every day for the past years from 1999, I wake up at four on my knees. Meditate. Worship, call on him hmm. Ev- from 1999 till today. I have never stopped. Wow. So we had this in good times. That's you get it? Mm. In good times, you maintain it. If I miss, even if I'm on a plane, I, I find myself waking up. No matter how comfortable it is, I must connect. I must hear mm. what am I doing next. There are times, listen, there are times I've had been invited to places, even here in Kampala. And at my 4 a.m. prayer altar, the Lord says, there you are not going. Mm. I said, but Lord, this place is so... The Lord says, no. Mm. And I don't go. I find out later that it was even more dangerous than I thought. Wow. You know? So cult- connected. Exactly. Mm. So it is that place... Do we fall short of the glory of God? We do. I am not a perfect man Mm. at all. Mm. I don't even count myself. I've never been. I have fallen short of the glory of God countless times. But because I don't run away, I run towards God. Mm. Towards God. The Mm. whole time. Towards God. You know, somebody asked me, how have you managed? You know, I got married at a very tender age. 21. 21. You know? Wow. Straight out of uni mm. to that. And somebody says, well, and I married a 19-year-old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and not anybody's, mm-hmm. but somebody who has a remarkable father. A man, not only with a mouth, but with a brain. My father I know is Mr. Alex Mukuru. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so at 19, mm. that man says, ah, you can have my daughter's hand mm. In, mm. in marriage. Mm. It can only be God. Be God, yeah. Do you know That's what I mean? True. That's true. Yeah. So I started praying. I've never stopped praying. Mm. I know Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. You will never know the thoughts of him mm. unless you come closer to him. Mm. How will you know? Mm. He's not going to speak on a, you know, but you have got to come closer. And these thoughts are endless. Mm. You desire to be a millionaire. He makes you one. Mm. And before you know, you desire something. Keep hearing the thoughts of God. So mm. for us, mm. it was always that. Of course, when trouble hits, sometimes you get shaken, you get derailed. Yes. But if you have been doing this consistently, the spirit of the Lord nudges you and mm. keeps bringing you back mm. into that place. Mm. And when you're in that place, you hear. For me, listen, I have tested both ends of the coin. I'm not after fame. And I have never been. Those days of I desire to be known, I desire to be famous, they are gone. Mm. When you go before God, then it becomes purpose. Mm. I was speaking to somebody just recently that I have seen men that I've known, even in the city, men of God that I've known. Mm. I have seen their beginning days, Mm. their Genesis days. Mm. And then when something starts coming up, I can smell danger. Mm. Because when a man starts speaking another language, which is not of God, Mm. there is speaking a language of revelation. And the language I'm saying is not words, mm, mm. but character. Do you understand what mm, I'm trying to say? Mm. When the character... You see them taking a detour. When it shifts, mm. then I know the end. Because I've seen a few. Mm. I've seen a few. Listen, it didn't end with T.L. Osborne. Mm. It didn't end 
with uh, Bishop Idahosa. It did after. The, it will still go. Mm. So that is knowledge for you to know. Mm. That Lord, Let me be you answered. know, where you found me. David mm. never ceased being that guy that was at the back of the mountain. Mm. Where nobody knew him. The guy dances and the daughter of Saul says, Gwei. Zain, I'm a princess. How dare you? But the man was like me. I was dancing like this at the back of the mountain with nobody saw. This is me. Mm. This is the best I will ever be. Who? The worshiper. Mm. So when you're able to stay at that place at the feet of Christ, you know, Martha Mary, mm. you know, Martha complains and says, how dare I'm here doing everything. But Mary knew that this is the best place mm. I'll ever be. Mm. There's no way I can please God than being at his feet. And that's it. So you keep hearing, mm. hearing, faith cometh by hearing, mm. and hearing it by the word you. of God, you know? It you overflags. Exactly. You. So, mm. and that place in the detention center, mm. that is what kept us going. We kept hearing. And the voice of God comes in various things. Like mm. now I stumbled on two rhapsodies of realities. I didn't read I it know. before. That, that, that brought Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> then God starts speaking. Mm. And I'm hearing God. These words are jumping out like mm. real. Mm. So, and the rest becomes wow. just an experience. Wow. Mm. Let's talk about the lessons. Mm. So many lessons that you have amassed mm. over the time, over mm. all the rough patches. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you can be able to share it with someone and tell them, you know what? Mm. Yeah. This is it. When you go through certain experiences, <laughs> right. there is a, just like you say that mm. you see something coming from afar and you're like, I wish he can dodge it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And, and, and you're like, God, mm. I mean, let me just pray for them. That's let me it. not, you know, because mm. if you talk, if you mm. speak, then That's you're called it. a wiseka. That's then it. why is it you that is mm. saying this? But not knowing that there are experiences that you have exactly. gone through, that mm. your muscle has grown stronger, exactly. your discernment has That's grown it. stronger. Mm. So I want us to share those lessons as we conclude. Mm. Um, I think the scripture there, mm. uh, we have to take example from Christ. The Bible says Jesus the same yesterday, mm. today, and forever. Mm. Um, we can only change to become more like Christ. Um, lessons I've learned. Mm. One of the things I've learned that the higher you go, the humbler you must become. If God can wow. grass you to become humble, That's powerful. You know? You know, I was talking to somebody and the guy asked me, how come you still take those calls from mm. those people? Mm. Say the hey. <laughs> I am the same guy who used to wait for those calls. Mm. Yeah? Mm. I was like, Lord, if I can get this call. Those days, yes. now that I, you think I've changed too much that I can't receive these calls, like how? You know, so there should be those measures. Mm. You must do a self-inventory at every stage. Mm. That most of the enemy is trying to make you think you're the biggest deal in town. Let it not get to you. You can never be the big, and I'll look in the camera. Mm. You can never be the biggest deal in town. Mm. Once upon a time, we used to have Nokia. I know. As the phone of the time. The only. <laughs> <laughs> Nokia was the thing. If yeah. you didn't have a Nokia. Yeah. Today we have iPhone and all this. And a few years down the road, there will be another Something thing else. big in town. Mm. You know, but. Remember from where God brought you from. Yes. Me when I remember rejected, you know, fatherless. Supposed to die. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Before seven. Then how can I think I'm bigger than life? I know. So humility at the heart of all things. You become, and another thing of, you know, people can have a different narrative about you, but make sure you have a God narrative about yourself. A God narrative. A God narrative. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But I think fearfully, sometimes people think fearfully in things and do a kabi. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. But fearfully that I honor the living God. Mm. I love mm. God. I love his word. And Christ said these two commandments on all, on these two commandments, all the rest of the commandments hang. Love the Lord your mm. God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, you know. Mm. And love thy neighbor as yes, you love, love yourself. yourself. How do you measure? Mm. If your love for people becomes extinct in your heart, you have gravitated from God. Wow. I'm telling you. you know, if your love for people becomes extinct, mm. you're going that side. You know, you should see things that make your heart cry because those things make the heart of God cry. Mm. The Bible says, and so God loved the world. How? He had He had that cry that I cannot let my children go on with this thing of sin written all over them. Mm. I must send Christ, my only son, to mm. die. Mm. So we must be at that position 
that I, I am humble. I am calm. Mm -hmm. Yes, do we get proud sometimes? We do, because mm -hmm. we are humans. Yes. But correct yourself and get back in line on time. Mm -hmm. And that way, mm -hmm. you'll be able to overcome. Wow. These <laughs> are, 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 are real gems, mm. are real gems. But when you talk about the love, the love of God mm. and the, the love of people not mm. getting ex extinct in our lives, mm. how do you say you serve God and how do you say that you help people without loving them? Exactly. Because God loves his people. Mm. And so if you really want to serve, I think we've talked about service uh, mm. as a leap service mm. for so long, not coming from our hearts. Mm. And I think when we are in the roughest of the mm. situations, I don't know if you made promises to God. <laughs> <laughs> you are quick to say mukama go and see is it are you fulfilling those promises <laughs> because there are so many of us that promise and never fulfill can you imagine how quick we divert i know yeah do you know <laughs> when life gets a <laughs> listen mm. before this god challenged me one time mm, you know mm. uh, i was believing god for a car in order to make my way to work. And I said, Lord, if you give me the car, mm -hmm. I'll make sure that I extend my devotion time before I go to work. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When mm. I got the car, mm -hmm. <laughs> now I just started enjoying going to work quicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord reminded me. You promised. I had to come back and bow. But in conclusion, mm. listen, we should not boast in numbers. Yeah. You know, there's this new disease that has crept into the body of Christ. I have X amount of people that follow me. I have this on Instagram. I sit this amount on this day. That is a vanity of vanity. vanities. Yeah, vanity. It is the truth. It may not be desired by you now, but when wisdom fills your heart, you will know. Mm. Those are vanities. God wants the man, singular. The heart, singular. And that's how it is. Mm. He's the God of the thousands. But he's the God who delights in the man. You would still city. be the most important person, even if you didn't have hey, anything else to do. And that's it. If you cannot love God in the individualism, being one, and you think, for me, I worship when we are, me, I'm, I get excited about ministry when I see the thousands, you are dead spiritually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk to um, the people that. Um, you would say high status mm. because they suffer silently. Of course. They suffer silently. Mm. And uh, so many people down here, I mean, we are at liberty, we can share things, mm. we can meet so and so. We can, mm. Because Abantu Bawansi, there is mm. a way you deal exactly. with people, there is mm. a way you bump into people. Mm. Some people will even make fun of your situation mm. and you will find yourself laughing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, What's wrong with these people? Exactly. Yeah. But the higher you go, mm -hmm. there is a, a separation that mm -hmm. happens and the devil tends to put you in a corner mm -hmm. alone and you hear these voices and and sometimes men of God have thought about killing themselves. Of course. They've thought about killing themselves. Of course. And they've locked themselves away. They have separated from their families and they have hated everything. Some of them have gone out of God. Of course. Completely. Of course. I want you to speak to them. I think the David example is a very key example. Mm. Everybody goes to war. Mm. Man stays. Mm. Nobody was there to tell David, wait. Get back in line. No, he was the, he was the king. Mm. And lo and behold, he's led to the top of the palace. Mm. And he sees. <laughs> Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. But if he had somebody who could put him in line, he'd say, how can you be a king and you're not and you'd at know. the battlefield? Yeah. Those days, kings led their people to the battlefield. Mm. They led. Mm. So, this is why I pointed out, you mm. don't choose the family you come from. Mm. Maintain that position of, maintain that seat of a spiritual father. Number one, maintain. Mm. Cause, and allow your spiritual father to speak nothing else but the truth mm. to you. Mm. Me, my spiritual father tells me in my face, Michael, you're wrong. Mm. I don't care what it is, you are wrong. Mm. Over Michael here, you've done well. Mm. He's a voice. Hence the reason you don't a hear me that I've changed the spiritual cover. I don't. Because mm. this man knows me from zero. He knows me from the time I was drunk. You're not measuring yeah? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. If he knows me from that place, he, tell, he knows my walk. We meet every year. I go to that man and I kneel down and he prays for me. Mm. And God works through that man. Listen, God, if God can speak through a donkey, God can use anything. Mm. Can use anyone. Mm. Maintain. 
And God sees when you're maintained. Secondly, mm. have people you walk with in life. People that you can simply undress yourself. Yeah. Me, I have my hobbies from time. Mm. Yesterday we went out and we sat. They tell me I have erred in life. And they tell me, Sebo, we know. Na ye wano ufudeko. Ufudeke na umalo oyisawo wano tutu. Because you come back and cry to us and mm. we don't want to carry you through those days. Mm. We know where you're going. Please get back in line. Mm. And I hear. Those are, those are not yes people. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They are not there they to, please. Not to please. Yeah. These guys, no matter, even if I become as big as the sun, <laughs> to them, I'm still that little. Because they've known me mm. from the days I had to be tuli in Pali and stuff. But those are the huh? first people that people cut off. Wisdom is the principal mm. thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. And that's how Samuel mm. tells David, tells him, Sebo, of course the Bible does not put this thing out. Yeah. Yes. But you can imagine Samuel telling the guy, Sebo, mm. get back. Mm. You know, you must have those people. Jonathan, if Jonathan lived all the way, mm. he would tell David flat in his face. Mm. Hence the reason David had to call and said, because mm. he understood that if this person said anything, mm. I have to take it as value. Obviously, and another thing, be very careful about the yes people. Because mm. they will never oh. love you for you. They will lift you up and leave you hanging. They only love you for what you're doing. Yeah. There's, you know, there's a gentleman I know and he's a very sweet soul. But the yes people mm. are leading him off. I know, I've known him since 1997. And by the grace of God, God has lifted but the yes people around him. Mm. And that's a mistake. Those people that knew him from the time, a few of them have gone away. Mm. And he has this well singer. Mm. Oh, man. You know, mm -hmm. things like that. Let's pray. <laughs> Let's pray. Pray for us. Amen. Yes. Uh, mm. Mm. Father, I pray for every person that is watching this program, Lord God Almighty. I pray that you meet them at their point of need, not mm. just as a cliche. But you're the God that touches even the parts of our hearts that we would, we would never, ever allow anybody to reach. Mm. You created us in your image and likeness. Mm. You know everything about us. So I pray, King of Glory, that you touch every individual person that needs to be touched. Mm. Father, let your hand, the healing hand, reach to every person. I pray mm. for that specific, specific person that has been contemplating suicide. Let your heart, let your heart be touched by God in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. I pray in the name of Jesus that the word there's been confusion. Let there be a realignment of thought in the mighty name of Jesus. And above all, we plead the blood of Jesus upon every person watching this broadcast to the glory of your name. Father, let there be a new arising mm. from the people that you created. Let there be a new revelation that will bring them to a new understanding of who you are. Mm. You are good and your mercies endure forever. Mm. We thank you and we bless you in the most powerful and glorious name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Amen. We love you. Mm. Bless you.